join me in welcoming Paul to the stage. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Schönen guten Morgen. It's nice to be back in Berlin. I was recalling earlier that uh, Berlin is actually the first city where I ever experienced augmented reality on the way home from a pub here in the city about 15 years ago. Um, we were walking past a shop which had an artistic exhibition in it, which featured a very large screen with some cameras around it, which did some edge detection on you as you moved in front of the camera and represented a picture of you on the screen in the window with bubbles emanating from wherever you were moving. So I guess the idea caught fire. Uh, and here we are some 15 years later at the Augmented World Expo here in Berlin. So I guess let me start by giving a short overview of Daiquiri for those of you who are not familiar with us. We're approximately seven years old. Uh, we're heading for 350 people. And we've got a footprint in six different locations four of which in Europe and two in the US. Our worldwide headquarters is in Los Angeles, and our European headquarters is in Dublin, Ireland. Um, we've been coming to the Augmented World Expo pretty much from the start, and we're a big fan of the show. Um, I guess in terms of who we are and what we did, initially we were a company who developed apps for augmented reality. And about three years ago, we pivoted to focus on industrial applications and also decided at that point to develop our own hardware as well as our own software. In Daiquiri, we believe passionately about the concept of augmented reality everywhere. And I know from having attended some previous AWE events that that idea is prevalent amongst the community who comes here. Um, so in today's presentation, I will give you an overview of some of the use cases and scenarios that we see as being key in this vision. I'll give you an overview of the devices and platforms that we at Daiquiri are creating to help to make this vision a reality. And I'll also share some market data to try and frame an analysis of where we are in that journey. So where have we come from, where are we now, what's left to run? Um, I'll take a quick look at some of the blockers and the drivers of that progression and finish the presentation with a call to action for how we can make this vision happen together. It's no secret that Daiquiri has always had a focus in the use of augmented reality at work, at least since we pivoted towards industry. Um, today, I think it's pretty well documented that augmented reality has established itself in the workplace. There are many applications, such as in warehousing, and there's a large growth in the number of proofs of concept and pilot studies for companies uh, engaged in tasks such as field service, manufacturing, maintenance type activities. We're also seeing a strong interest in this technology from the architecture, engineering, and construction sector, as is alluded to in this photograph. The benefits of the use of augmented reality in the workplace are also pretty well documented, primarily operational efficiency, productivity, training, and worker safety. Our concept of augmented reality everywhere starts off in the workplace. So we have a worker wearing a Daiquiri Smart Helmet, who in the workplace uses augmented reality to get context-relevant instruction for the tasks in which they're engaged. And that same technology helps them to keep safe during their working shift. After that shift ends, we see the worker taking off their Smart Helmet, putting on a pair of Smart Glasses. Leaving their workplace, their Smart Glasses will reacquaint them with their personal life might give them a reminder to buy their mom flowers if Sunday's Mother's Day coming up, might remind them to buy some groceries on the way home. In fact, the glasses, we see them as directing the person towards their car through augmented reality instructions and directions to find their car in the parking lot. Hey, we even see augmented reality as potentially allowing the person to open up their car so that they can interact with the car in a virtual and an augmented uh, experience. Once the user sits in that car, we envisage the user taking off their smart glasses, resting them on the passenger seat, and that session of augmented reality seamlessly transitioning to now exist within the automobile that the person is driving. So once in the car, the augmented reality session transfers to an augmented reality heads-up display in the car. So 
so typically rendered on the windshield. This can direct you, for example, to the shop where you need to stop to pick up the groceries we mentioned before, but certainly can drive you home into your driveway and get you there safely and effectively. Once home, we see the driver taking their smart glasses from the seat, walking in the driveway into their house, placing the glasses on the coffee table, and that augmented reality session then transfers seamlessly to their home, where other devices such as projectors, etc., can take up the augmented reality experience. So augmented reality everywhere to us means a world where augmented reality guides you on the job, directs you on the road, and delivers a great experience in your home, also functioning as a lifestyle tool. And our vision in Daiquiri, or our mission in Daiquiri, is to build the hardware and software platforms to enable you to develop the apps and the content to make this vision a reality. I want to take a look at some market data to look at where we are today. So where are we in the evolution? And I thought a good benchmark might be to look at some of the analyst figures as to the size of the market and what's happening next. So to frame the overall context, let's look at the wearable industry for a start. So revenue in 2013 was about $13.9 billion. This year, we're looking at 28.7 forecasted. And that's heading for north of $61 billion by 2020. So this is obviously a high growth market. It includes devices such as wristbands, smartwatches, sports devices, smart clothing, body-worn cameras, augmented reality devices, head-mounted displays. Within that wearable sector, the particular area of focus for me today is the head-mounted display. So head-mounted display includes, in this analysis, smart glasses, AR-enabled glasses, VR masks and headsets, and head-mounted computers. So everything that we would consider part of augmented reality that's worn on the head. The growth of this sector is pretty spectacular. So it started off at $40 million back in 2013. This year is about $900 uh, million. And by 2020, we're looking at north of $21 billion. So a huge 145% compound growth rate over the next four years. So this in 2020, 20, north of 21 billion will be just over a third of the total wearables market from today, where it's not even a 30th, and back in 2013, it was hardly existing. So this huge growth for us signifies the proliferation of the underlying technology which makes augmented reality possible and makes it possible everywhere. To look at what is driving this head-mounted display growth, I think it's worth delving a little bit deeper just to see what applications are driving the usage of those devices and are, and are driving demand. So gaming has certainly helped proliferate uh, VR platforms, such as Vive and PlayStation and some of these other devices. I guess more recently, augmented reality has also started to drive gaming applications on some mobile applications, the advent of Pokemon Go and many other AR applications. Um, in the lifestyle, lifestyle space, you also see some new products being announced, such as Snapchat glasses. So head-mounted displays are starting to proliferate beyond some of the early adapter cases. The Google Explorers program, which ended in 2015, certainly enchanted the world with the idea of AR-enabled smart glasses. Since that program has ended, lots of people who have developed that passion are now looking to other areas for potential applications. We in Daiquiri see business and industrial use cases as being a key driver of this head-mounted display growth. And it's certainly taking increased momentum currently. And what we see from our experience is a lot of key workplace use cases, including training, safety of the worker, simulated work environments where the worker can learn tasks without actually working with products. We see remote expert type applications being very, very interesting. So over-the-air coaching from an expert who's, who's located somewhere else, who's seeing what you're seeing in your environment through a live camera link up. And we see a lot of interest in worker productivity and safety. So the use of augmented work instructions um, or augmented reality visual instruction, which helps the worker to do their task quicker 
and with less error. Many of the early adopter companies have been doing pilots in this area for some time, and we see an increased proliferation and interest in pilots beyond that early adopter group currently. Um, a lot of the first use cases we've seen have been in field services. I think there's many well-documented cases of the use of augmented reality in a warehousing situation, pick-and-place type functions. And we're seeing a lot of interest also in manufacturing environments. So they're the drivers. I guess to look at the inhibitors, traditionally the inhibitors of the proliferation of augmented reality has included the lack of robust hardware. I mean, the space is new. What we're trying to do, what everybody's trying to do to have miniature wearables, which can produce a very, very high visual quality of experience, it is cutting edge. So the, the evolution of the tech has been something historically that has been an inhibitor. I think today we're at the stage where um, hardware has reached a maturity where it is now real. In addition, uh, a, a limiting factor or an inhibitor has been the ability to integrate lots of the software required to support augmented reality experiences into customer enterprises. And last but not least, uh, the ability to generate content and relevant and compelling content to want users to actually use the technology. So at Daiquiri, what we're doing about this is I'm excited to say we are f releasing our developer edition Daiquiri Smart Helmet to the open market on October 31st. We've been selling it to a smaller number of, of key customers and partners over the past couple of years, but we're now opening out the sales of the product to anybody from the uh, partner or consumer space who's interested. Um, we believe it's a pretty powerful device. It's effect essentially as powerful as the most powerful laptop, which you can commercially buy with a core M7 processor, some Intel depth sensors on there. And we've got our Daiquiri computer vision, so our specialist uh, from the ground up developed algorithms, which fuse the output from a high def camera with a six degree of freedom IMU inside the helmet to give positional tracking, uh, which is optimized in hardware on our device. We will have PPE certification on this device in quarter two of next year. And by the end of the year, we will have full HASLOC certification for use of this device in oil and gas and chemical environments. We have also developed a vehicle heads-up display, which today is driving around in about 150,000 cars around the world. Um, we're pretty excited about this device. It offers many advantages to existing state-of-the-art in terms of vehicle heads-up displays. What it effectively is is a holographic projection onto the windshield of the car. So rather than looking at the dashboard for your directions and for some key information about the operation of the car, it's projected holographically in front of you. The technology we have and why we're so excited about it is it's over two and a half times brighter and consumes drastically less power than the nearest competitor, also occupying very little space. To facilitate development of content, which is one of the key blockers, I guess. So to, fac to facilitate development of content, we're releasing on October 31st a number of tools, which will be free of charge. Um, the basic operating system on all of our devices will be the same Daiquiri operating system. Um, that will include drivers for the individual hardware, but it will present a unified operating system across all of our hardware platforms. The concept being, if you develop assets for one of our hardware platforms, that they are portable across to other platforms in our family. The developer tools which we're releasing effectively are threefold. So we will allow access to our Daiquiri operating system through an API where we'll bundle access functions. We will also wrap that API into a Unity extension. So if you're familiar with developing in Unity, uh, you can just download our free of charge extension, which will allow you to deploy Unity assets to our helmet. And we will be also releasing our Daiquiri 4D Studio content creation tool. So that's the concept of how you create content for our, for our hardware platforms. We also have web-based portals for user management and device management. So to allow you to create working teams of users who are using our products, uh, developer teams or who are contributing content for the platforms, and also device management tools to manage tasks like over-the-air updates, and status information of the various different assets that are out in the field. Of course, 
I've spoken here about products in the last couple of minutes. Um, you know, th this is, these are tools for you to develop content and applications uh, to, on top of our hardware products. Um, but this is, a, this is a community effort. It's an ecosystem effort. Um, we don't see ourselves as being services specifically, but are rather focused on the platform. Um, so to that end, we are proud members of the area, the Augmented Reality Enterprise Alliance. Um, we also started our own DACRI partner program to invite collaboration with others to, to innovate and develop content and bring augmented reality to others. At this point in time, we are focused on the key client verticals that I show here, so still workplace focused. If you're interested in learning more about the Partners program, I'd invite you to check out partners.dockery.com, where we have lots of information available. So to wrap up the presentation, um, just going back, you know, head-mounted displays are poised for terrific growth over the next four years and beyond. Um, I believe this will mirror the proliferation of augmented reality towards the end vision of having augmented reality everywhere. Um, this is a, a journey which I think we're all embarking on together, so we're very excited about that journey and looking forward to sharing it together with you. So, thank you very much.